This chloride is basically have an a dark color to the present of the blood vessels. This chloride used to bind itself a medical make a ring around and this ring is known as an iris. And there is a hole in between the iris and this hole is known as a pupil. Now, just below the pupil there is a lens which used to focus the light. It used to put through the light on the retina. So the light enters from the cornea, reach to the enters from the cornea, reach to the pupil, and from the pupil it reaches to the lens. Now how the lens basically is adjusting itself just behind the pupil through a ciliary muscles. The ciliary muscles are basically holding the lens through a ligament and this ligament is known as a suspensory ligaments. Now listen to me very carefully. Just check it out here that there, this is basically the ciliary muscles. These ciliary muscles are going to hold the lens through a ligament and these ligaments are basically known as the suspensory ligaments. These rings are basically holding the lens to the ciliary muscles by a suspensory ligaments. These rings are known as a suspensory ligaments which are basically holding the lens through the ciliary muscles. That's why the lens is just behind the pupil. Now, when you used to see the thing that is far away from you, then what used to happen? These ciliary muscles will basically relax. When the ciliary muscles is going to relax, then it is going to basically make the lens less convex. But when the ciliary muscle is going to contract, then the lens used to become more convex. When the ciliary muscles used to relax, the lens become less convex and we are able to see the object that is far away from us. But when the ciliary muscles used to contract, the lens became more convex and we are able to see the image that is closer to our eye. So you can say like that. You can say that like this is the pupil and behind the pupil there is a lens. This is basically the lens that is present behind the pupil. This lens is adjusted through a ligament to a ciliary muscle, ciliary muscle. When these ciliary muscles used to become relaxed, then the lens used to become less convex. When the ciliary muscles, you can say that, These ciliary muscles, when used to relax, the lens become less convex and we are able to see the thing that is far away from us. But when it used to contract, the lens become more convex and we are able to see the object that is more closer to each other. So you have seen the difference when these ciliary muscles through the suspensory ligament, when it used to relax, the convex lens become less convex. But when they are going to, you can say contract, the convex lens become more convex so that we are able to see the things closer to us. Okay, the next layer is the retina. So students, you can see here that this is the layer known as the retina. This layer is basically the sensory layer. Sensory. This is the layer which is basically sensing the vision. It means that 
this is the layer through by the help of this layer we are able to differentiate in between the colors we are able to see the objects as well as this is the sensory layer it's mean that this layer had the connection with the brand so the retina basically have two parts one is the fovea and other one is the optic nerve sorry optic disc that is what optic disc this optic disc is that part of the retina which have an a connection with the brand eye connection with the brand through the optic nerve so the optic disc is that point this is the optic disc you can say that this is the optic disc and this optic disc is that point that is present in the retina which is basically connecting the brand with the eye through a nerve and this is known as the optic nerve this optic disc do not contain any kind of the roots and the cones that's why this is known as the blind spot roots and cones are basically you can say are pigments which are actually helping to differentiate in the colors the cones used to get activated during the bright light the cones used to get activated during the bright light while the rods used to get activated during the dim light these both basically are the photosensitive cell this mean that these are the cells which used to detect the light so we were discussing about the roots and cones root and cones both are the photosensitive cells photosensitive cells means that light sensitive so what is happening the roots used to get activate during the dim light while the cones used to activate during the bright light that's why the cones have the ability to distinguish between the colors so this is the blind spot as i told you before that the optic disc is basically connecting the eye with the brain through the optic nerve and this is basically the point which do not contain any kind of the root or any kind of the cone so that's why it is known as a blind spot while the other part of the retina is known as a fovea that is just present next to the lens this mean that this is the fovea and the fovea is just present next or you can say behind to the lens on the retina this fovea contain the maximum cells of the cones that's why it is able to differentiate in between the colors during the presence of the light have you ever seen when there is no light you are unable to see the differentiation between the colors you are unable to differentiate why the reason is that the light is no more falling on the fovea and the fovea contains the cone cells so cone cells are not activated did you get the meaning it means that beta when the light turns off you are unable to see the objects the reason is that when you turn off the light there is a no light which is going to pass through from the cornea then to the pupil then to the lens and then to the fovea when there is no light falling on the fovea it means the cone cells are not going to get activate and when there is no cone cells are going to get activate obviously we are unable to differentiate between the colors so hope so you get that so you can read from here that the roots are the sensitive to the dim light while the cones are sensitive to the bright light and so distinguish between colors retina has two points fovea and the optics the fovea is the tip retina directly opposite to the lens and is densely packed with the cone cell it is largely responsible for the color vision and the sharpness Optic disc is the point in the retina where the optic nerves enters retina. There's a no root in the cone at this point that's why it is also referred as the blind spot. The human eye contain 125 like rows and 7 like cones. 
Okay, if you are going to discuss about the chambers of the eyes, chambers means you know what well chamber मतलब खाने. So if you are going to discuss about the chamber of the eyes, then there are two chambers of the eyes. The one is the arterial and other one is the posterior chamber. Arterial chamber means next and posterior means behind. So this iris is basically dividing the. This is the iris which is basically dividing the eye into the two chamber. One is known as the arterial and other one is known as the posterior chamber. The arterial chamber is present in front of the iris and cornea. This is the imperial chamber, arterial. While posterior posterior chamber is present between the iris as well as retina. So this is basically the posterior chamber. The anterior, arterial, and the posterior chamber both contains the fluid. The clear fluid is present in the arterial chamber, that is from iris and the cornea, and this is known as the aqueous humor. While this is basically the clear fluid, while the fluid that is present. in the posterior chamber is known as the vitreous fluid humor and it is basically you can say that that jelly like you can say that it is a jelly like fluid and that is known as a vitreous humor it is basically helping in maintaining the shape of the eye and it used to keep the lens delicate it's mean clean and clear so this is the eye the muscles are holding the eye which is helping in the movement of the eye and this is the optic nerve which is to carry the message from the eye to the brain well i used to keep save in the bony part of the skull and that bony part is known as the eye orbit or eye socket well the eye orbit or the eye socket is the one which is keeping the eye Well, this is the human eye. Let's see its structure. The human eye contains the outermost layer, and that is known as a sclera. And next to the front, in front of the sclera, there is a cornea that is a transparent. Well, the cornea, behind the cornea, there is an lens. The second layer of the eye is known as the choroid. the core right is basically dark red in the color which used to have an a white color is red the reason is that it contains the blood vessels the ciliary muscles are also there which used to hold the lens through the suspensory ligament the ends of the core right is basically bent and making a ring known as a iris the iris in between the iris there's an a hole and that is known as a pupa The innermost layer is the retina. A retina have two points as told you before one is the fovea and other one is the optic nerve. You can see that how the light is transferring the light from the cornea to the lens and then from the lens to the retina and then retina to the optic nerve. The retina basically contains cones and the rods the photosensitive cells which used to detect the light and used to form an image and differentiate in color so how the light is transferring first we should know about the chambers of the eye the aqueous humor is the anterior chamber contain anterior chamber containing aqueous humor and the vitreous humor is present in the posterior chamber and this vitreous humor is basically the jelly like fluid whereas the anterior chamber contain aqueous humor which is a clear fluid but this is a jelly one now how the light is transferring this is the new point you should know the light used to enter from the cornea to the pupil and then it reaches to the aqueous humor and then to the lens and then from the lens the light passes to the vitreous humor and then it is detected by the retina the retina used to the retina have the you can say cones and the rods which used to detect the light and then the message is transferred to the optic nerve and then from the optic nerve it used to move towards the brain
so this is the pathway of the traveling of the light from the you can say from cornea to the optic nerve from cornea it will enters into the you can say exactly from the pupil and then pupil to the aqueous humor and then aqueous humor to the lens and then lens to the vitreous humor and then vitreous humor to the retina and then the optic nerve I have told you before the tears about the tears the tears are basically protecting the eye from those bacteria which can cause the eye infection so the tears are also beneficial for the eye cleaning hope so you enjoyed the lecture if anything is not clear see the video again and again stay tuned and love this